Hello, my name is Alexander Nikolai Sabo, and these are my colleagues Mate, Christian Tenasse, and Paul Dragos Vasile Nikolai. And today we would like to continue our journey which we started last year in efficient manage in efficient waste disposal. First, I would, we would like to get some things out of the way. First are the challenges currently faced in urban waste management, such as growing urban populations, which leads to increased waste gener generation. And of course, with uh, such a huge population and such a huge uh, waste problem, of course, there have been environmental sustainability concerns. We would like to address them and provide a somewhat scalable and viable solution to this. Of course, we have a somewhat rich background. We are a continuation of last year's Clean City project, although we have greatly improved since then, and we want to focus mostly on one of the systems this year, which is the actual sorting mechanisms. When we came up with the system, we wanted to urbanize it for urban efficiency. That's why we kept it somewhat small, at around 3 meters by 2.5 meters by 2 meters, so that we could easily attach said sorting mechanisms to the current infrastructure that we see today in, on our streets and in our cities. After that, we wanted, of course, to be innovative, to push something over the edge. That's why we used advanced sorting conveyors, which are so conveyor beds that use sensor-based technology for initial waste categorization. We will see this in the later parts of the presentation. And automated segregation units, which are which precisely separate materials based on type using mechanicals and sensor-driven methods. Uh, the concept is spread on in four main mechanical areas, three of which handle the sorting and one of which handles the disposal. Firstly, we have to talk about the primary sorting, sorting area. This is the most brutish part of the process because it's placed right at the entrance and its main purpose is looking out oversized pieces of waste and metallic pieces of waste. How we sort by size is by using a, a vibrating trommel, which is essentially just a big cylinder which spins and it uses the centrifugal force to fit objects through some grates, somewhat, not necessarily small like spirals, but we can call them grates. And after that, of course, we see which materials are oversized because they won't fit and they'll just go right through to a special compartment where they'll be manually sorted later by Later. But the pieces that go through then go on separate conveyor beds, which are fitted with magnetic and eddy current sector separators. Magnetic separators will, of course, uh, handle the ferrous metals, such as iron, and eddy current separators handle aluminum, non ferrous metals, which don't necessarily are tried, which aren't attracted by magnets. They use by inducing a eddy current, as the name implies, which bounces them forward. Basically a small kinematics problem in the pumps. After that we go to the secondary sorting area. This is the most technologically advanced of the bunch. It also handles most of the processing power and sorting capacity. I approximately to do about 80% of the sorting in a real world scenario. This place is fitted with lots of cameras which are connected to computers that are programmed with AI to recognize materials. <coughs> and after that, they can relay signals to uh, optical sorters and mechanic, uh, mechanic systems such as sliding gates, as you can see in the figure on the slide, which essentially serve to route the waste into where we want it to go, whether it be shoots or other off-running off, uh, off conveyor belts. If uh, materials haven't been sorted through, which can happen, although there wouldn't be that many, it goes into the fine sorting area. This is the most precise of the three, and, it's, and it uses technology which we suggested last year, uh, near infrared hyper, uh, hyperspectral imaging. But instead of using it to handle way a, a, a huge amount of material, we use it to sort small parts, thin shards of glass. Of course, the camera picks up, detects the material, and then relays the information to a set of pneumatic ejectors, which only really function efficiently because the materials are so small. We can shoot them with jets of air, and because of aerodynamic properties, we can redirect where they will, where, where, where they will go. Of course, after they're sorted and done, we have to collect and handle these. 
We do this by using uh, shoots in uh, diagonal shoots mostly because we want to maximize both vertical and horizontal use of our free microphone fragmental area. And of course, uh, given that it's such a small design, we also wanted to optimize space use and create a somewhat simple algorithm that would be, wouldn't be that hard to find faulting. This is why we have that uh, little uh, scheme up there. The waste after it's sorted and compared to our data, if the waste is identified good, it goes into the EU reglemented uh, garbage bin. If not, it gets sent to a separate compartment where the operator will see it later. Of course, given the complexity of such a subject, we need to have a strong control and monitoring system, which is why we opted to use industrial grade uh, industrial grade monitors that were placed that would be placed in such a box and we we'll see uh, if there are any faults detected. If if there is an error between the two run times, it really is a signal again to a manual operator that we cannot miss it. As you can see, one of the design one of the design processes was how can we minimize human interaction. When I came up with the design, I had three main considerations in mind. Space maximization, which is why we opted for a somewhat vertical design. As you can see, most of the things uh, that we use are diagonal. We want to get some height. And of course, we need it to be modular and safe, not only because that ensures flexibility and safety, but also ease of maintenance. It's way easier to pop open a back panel and take out a camera than to open up a whole machine. And beyond that, we need it to maintain energy efficiency. Of course, not only is it in the scope of the project, but given that it's such a compact space, any excess heat that would be generated by its running could potentially damage its components. So we wanted to minimize that. Now, uh, you might have noticed that the concept idea and the components needed for it are extremely expensive. Like, uh, we estimated that the price of the full concept would be somewhere around $400,000, if I remember correctly. Because of this, um, we decided to um, um, try and create um, uh, something, uh, create a prototype for something we can uh, create without um, uh, buying such expensive equipment. We um, created a, an algorithm for sorting. Uh, we said create algorithm for sorting the um, waste. <laughs> Creating this algorithm, we decided to incorporate AI and machine learning for advanced material recognition. We used um, uh, we used things like TensorFlow, like the TensorFlow library, and Teachable Machine by Google for for developing our algori algorithm. Uh, we um, uh, decided to um, create supervised learning algorithms because uh, by creating by training the model with labeled waste material data. And because it was easier to continue learning once we created a module, a, mod, a model, then we will see is it expand. Uh, this way, our, um, our model has a rapid identification of waste types, such as of the following waste types, which are plastic, metals, and paper. Uh, now, you may be wondering how does machine learning work? Uh, we basically, machine learning is a sub version, is a sub. Uh, Sub-species um, sub uh, of AI learning, and um, uh, it basically is separated in three types. Uh, we have unsupervised learning, which basically is with unlabeled data, and the machine attempts to create, to, to find and um, create a role to um, put the different types of data into clusters. Supervised data, which is the data we decided to use, which basically, in which you basically give the machine a bunch of paired um, labels with the correct output, and the machine learns to, to um, match, learns to map the input with the uh, outputs based on the labeled data. And there is also reinforced learning, in which the machine learns to learn through trial and, re trial and error, receiving feedback in the form of a reward or a penalty. 
And we decided to use Teachable, oh no, Teachable Machine is a web app designed by Google, which uses supervised language to allow its users to create tensor flow compatible data sets and models. We decided to use uh, the, um, a Teachable Machine because it was, it is a far, it was not really accessible and easy to use on a day, uh, model, model creator. And because of its high level precision, most of the time we um, because of its nice precision, precision. <laughs> sorry. Uh, here you can see how we created the model and um, how it works, recognizing the three different um, waves types. Um, we use that uh, we use TensorFlow to um, uh, input our data into code. Uh, TensorFlow is an open source library made and developed by Google. Uh, for machine learning and AI models, basically it um, distributes strategically the processing power and um, compares it to the saved model and it can be used in multiple different um, uh, languages, coding languages. Uh, in our case we use it with Java. Um, yeah. Our prototype's design is uh, simple yet efficient in uh, showing that our way of thinking and implementing are actually correct. If, uh, we uh, try to show with this prototype that our uh, the detection method really works. Uh, the prototype is made out of a uh, verification box, that's where we uh, input our waste. Then the video camera will detect it. The RevCore hex motor uh, handles a trapdoor that allows the waste to go in a compartment that's labeled metal, paper, plastic, or other. The RevHD hex motor manipulates uh, those four compartments. Everything is connected to the control hub. Uh, that's uh, basically the brain of our prototype. It was developed by Rev for the first tech challenge competition that our colleagues uh, told you about earlier. Uh, we developed this prototype in uh, the lab of our robotics team, and uh, here it is a working video of our prototype. No, uh, we tried it, it's a bit. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you can see in the picture uh, the four uh, uh, compartments and uh, the small room for uh, the waste. Basically, uh, what uh, the, we <laughs> basically what you should uh, have seen in the video. Uh, our uh, colleague uh, introduced uh, a soda can, a uh, cardboard box, uh, a plastic bottle, and then uh, some string. Uh, the string is the only object that cannot be identified by our, our code, so it will go in the other compartment. Uh, in conclusion, we are happy to uh, tell you our achievements, that we improved our starting accuracy and uh, processing speed from last year, and uh, we, uh, 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 we uh, sorry, uh, and the reduction in might uh, impact uh, through efficient waste segregation and reduce the manual intervention. We also set uh, some uh, future goals such as potential for incorporating emerging technologies for even greater efficiency and uh, a scope for expansion and adaptation to various urban settings and waste management requirements. In uh, developing our prototype and uh, project, we use this uh, bibliography. So, thank you for your uh, patience. Orgamit, se poate să ne răspundeți în română, am întrebările pe care le-ați adresat. 
Oricum, a avut mic problemă că Ghinion nu face să nu sau nu e Ghinion, până la urmă, că vă cunosc. <laughs> Eu ca și cu George, dar nu m-ați prezentat. Sunteți în clasa 10-a ca și colegii voștri, așa? Aia, am uitat să vă întreb pe voi. Sunteți foarte familiar și credeam că toată lumea știe că sunteți în clasa 10-a. Și uh, voi sunt surd. <laughs> așa. Bine, că trebuia să facem această precizare. Uh, și acum, ce să zic, uh, o întrebare ar fi, uh, și voi aveți un concurs la care să participați cu un astfel de robot? Sau voi îl faceți doar de curiozitate, de plăcere? Bine, noi am început mai degrabă cu altul din plăcere. Și aveam o idee bună și am zis că dorim să o dezvoltăm. Acum, faptul că participare la concursuri de tip de și eventual în educație sunt pur și simplu un rezultat al muncii noastre și un loc unde să vedem ce mai putem îmbunătăți și ce crede lumea despre ce facem. Da. Asta e cea mai complicată și care cred că o să vă doriți de a dacă veți continua cu această va fi sortarea materialelor de Pozul lucrurilor de stat, este sub controlul dispozitivelor, de pasarea produsă, adică rezidurilor, va trebui să o adaptați cu evoluție de natura materialului, de toate cele sunt studii. Știu, cel puțin două persoane care au 30 de ani, au scris teze de doctorat în această de de că sortarea materialelor neperioate de baza principiilor de atraitorii lor în câmp electromagnetic a materialelor de perioas. Și mă bucur să văd că după 30 de ani există curiozitate în acest de ani de au teoretic de subiectitate de acest fel, fac de pas să se concretizeze. Cu siguranță că sunt și soluții deja la aceste tipuri de abutări și cu siguranță experiența voastră și intenția voastră și timpul pe care îl puteți aduca să Beneficiul, ce să-i? Beneficiul. Mulțumim, părere.